not tall enough, I can't do it. Let's see if I can get that one. The apple was such an important part of the winter diet, particularly in rural areas. You knew your apples. If you didn't know your apples, you died. <laughs> Every character of an apple would have been known, whether it would keep, whether it would turn into cider, or what it would be. There, that one, it's called Hanwell Souring. It comes from up near Banbury. Hanwell was found up there, 18th century, I think. Uh, a souring, a very sharp apple, and it's traditionally the one that uh, uh, would have been made into a sauce for the goose at Christmas. But this is the possibly the world's best apple. You say Ashmead's curdle, anybody who knows about the world of apples will fall on their knees and sob. <laughs> nice looking Ashmead's kernel. Just one or two more. Um, this is my second tree. It doesn't seem to do quite so well over here. There, most of these, if not all of them, I think, are at Brogdale at the National Collection. Um, nevertheless, it is a collection of very, very rare apples of Britain's history. Now here we've got one of the costard apples. In fact, we're not quite sure which one it is. But a costard from which we get the word costa monger. In other words, a costa monger with his barrow would have sold costards. And there you are. That's your original costard apple. It's not a wonderful apple by modern standards, but it's a real survivor. Ah, that is a, a medieval apple called a finger apple. Finger apples have gone out of fashion. People want apples shaped like apples, whatever that is. Curious beast, isn't it? Wouldn't see that on the market. But nevertheless, I knew about finger apples. I'd heard about them and I'd seen them in ancient textbooks. So I wanted it for the collection. That's an apple called Winston. Surprise, surprise, renamed in 1942 after a certain gentleman. I don't think it's a terribly wonderful apple, I'm afraid. That's very disloyal, but um, it's a nice, handsome looking beast. I was elected to be a curator of parks, and the parks is a much bigger organisation in the university than most people realise, because they actually look after uh, gardens all through the university, obviously, and the parks itself. But they also go as far as Summertown House up in North Oxford, they do go to Ifley, um, uh, they, go, uh, they look after the whole of this area as well, actually, um, uh, which is Whiteham. <coughs> and they had inherited, so to speak, this walled garden with which they could do nothing because there was nothing they wanted to do with it. They, it was partly a little nursery, but not very much. Um, and I said to the other curators, well, can I use it as a DNA library? And they said, fine. Very little was known about the origin of the apple. It was thought to be a hybrid of various crab apples. And somebody uh, had heard that there were apples in Central Asia. But in fact, that bit of Central Asia, the, the old stands, Uzbek, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, really hadn't been looked at by uh, Western biologists for, since 1927. A wonderful man called Nikolai Vavilov had collected through there in 1927. But then he fell foul of Stalin and was killed by Stalin. He was under the impression that the trees in Central Asia were one of a hybrid collection that made the sweet apple. So we assumed that when we began looking for the origin of the apple, we should be looking at several different sources. So what I got here were well, um, old apples, like Shakespeare's apple in the corner there, like um, uh, modern apples, like cooking apples, like uh, cider apples, like Tom Pot over there, um, like um, American, French, Dutch, German apples. So they're all here. And I thought we we're going to find all sorts of different things and different sources. And in the end, the whole thing turned out to be exactly the same utterly weird. Uh, all these apples come from a single stock. There was a single, in a sense, there was a single Adam and Eve apple. People want these perfect apples out of the supermarket and apples don't come that way. 
you want perfect apples, you're throwing away three quarters of the crop. You don't actually need the apple fruit for DNA analysis. All you need is, is a leaf. One leaf is perfectly sufficient to do all of the DNA you want. We expected that we would find contributions from West uh, crab apples like the wild crabs of Europe. It didn't happen. Everything seems to come from Central Asia. Still plenty of people who insist on trying to prove that other crabs from different parts of the world and after all there are 25, uh, at least 25 other species of apple that could contribute and even though efforts have been made to hybridize in the past they have all been totally unsuccessful which is very odd. It's just as if this apple here, this sweet apple that we so revere is a sexual snob in the sense that it won't or doesn't seem ever to have hybridized with any other species of apple. Lovely waxy bloom on the surface. I don't know what will happen to it. It's university property. The university can do what it likes with it. I sign a lease to look after it, but there'll come a time when I can't look after it. It does have a little bit more to it than just being a collection of old apple trees. Yep, it, it was the basis for working out exactly how, where and when the apple came from. Mm. And working out also how it got here, and the answer was mostly inside a horse. So it was because the horse and the apple, by coincidence, come from the same place. Um, and so as the apple came west, the horse came west. Wherever you have horses, you have apples. Offer an apple to a horse and it'll take your hand off. Oh yeah, so there we are, yeah. Oh, we're all right. Here the fourth part two, I think. Um, is it Bardolf? Bring me a dish of leather coats. In other words, a bowl of leather coats. Uh, would have been sold on every barrow in London or um, wherever Shakespeare was performing. Um, it wouldn't be turning up on a market now, it's much too rough and ugly looking, but it's still a very, very nice apple. Let's see if we can find another. Mm -hmm.